My videos it's raining really heavily outside so I'm not sure if you can hear that um, I'm gonna do a little bit about myself before I get started because I know that these kind of videos attract new people so hello and welcome if you've not watched one of my videos before um, I'm not gonna do like the hello my name is because you can see that and I get like cringe out with stuff like that but my background is that I am a stylist uh, that's been my whole career I was a stylist before I was a blogger I still do styling now it's like a freelance thing and I was a personal shopper at Harrods for five years. I have styled for E, music videos, all kinds of stuff and everyday styling. I love styling everyday women, sometimes men, for your everyday look. So that's what I'm really passionate about on my channel and the thing that I concentrate on the most. I concentrate on cost per wear. I wear high street, I talk about beauty and travel but I love luxury fashion. It's just... I don't want to pigeonhole myself but that is basically what I wear and what I kind of talk about on my channel. So that's a bit of a background. If you do, if you are interested in exactly what I do for a living, I am a full time blogger. I do do freelance and I do have other things that I do as well but I suggest you watch my other vlogs. Follow me on Instagram because uh, I'm very open about what I do in all of the vlogs, Instagram stories and that's the best way for you to, to understand exactly what I do, how I afford these bags. Because I am a blogger, some of these are gifted, it's just how it is um, with this job. They're not gifts, you know, that's what you get on your birthday. We do have to do something in return and if you don't get results, you don't get gifted. So it is part of the... the um, the job as a blogger and I will be declaring everything in the description box what was a gift and what I bought so that will also be a reason why I want to update this video so I did do this about two years ago it's such a terrible video I'd only just started blogging I hate that video and I this is well overdue and I know that a lot of you have requested it I also wanted to take this chance to explain, not explain, but to share that I know that these videos get me the most likes, the most subscribers, the, I make the most money on the AdSense, and my channel grows. I'm well aware of that. You can see my average video gets about 25,000 views, and videos like this get half a million, 100,000 views. And I just wanted to point out that I'm not here to jump on what's going to make me the most money, what's going to make me have the most following. I really do stick to what I just want to talk about and things that I love. And although it doesn't make me grow as much, I'm not here for that. I'm literally here to just talk about what I love. And in return over the years, that has really get, gained me a really trustworthy following. Like you all trust me, I, I think. And I think that over the years I've really gained everyone's trust and that really makes me stand out that I am doing this because I love it. I started blogging eight years ago and I'm not, not feel lucky because I don't believe in luck, but I am grateful I get to do this as a job. So that was a little introduction just for anyone that doesn't know me. And let's get into this. It's going to be about an hour long because I literally have so many bags I haven't even counted them and I'm going to change up my my collection that's why I'm filming this today I filmed a vlog yesterday and I picked out four bags that I'm selling they're probably sold by the time this goes if they're not I'll leave them in the description box and you can contact me to buy them if they're sold I'll put sold they're all sold so um it was very hard for me to decide but you'll see in that vlog I'll link it below I basically picked out you know, if I have four pink bags and I'm not using one of them, I'm selling that because I do want to change up my collection. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. I have braces if anyone doesn't know. So if you think I'm talking a bit weird, it's because I have braces. So yeah, changing it in the next couple of months. And then I'm going to refilm another handbag collection video because I think it's going to look completely different. Before this channel goes, uh, this video goes live, I would have shared my Hermes collection video and my Chanel collection video. So I'll leave the links to that description box, description, I keep saying that wrong, those links below. So if you want to see a full in-depth video of my Chanel collection, because I'm not going to talk in depth about each bag. And if you want to see the Hermes collection video where I talk more about the Hermes bags and how I buy them and everything, I'll leave them below. I've also pretty much got an unboxing video, definitely for every Hermes, and pretty much all my Chanel. So if you want to 
see more in depth of me talking half an hour about one bag then it will be on my channel this is just literally my bag collection so if I literally pick up one bag each and say this is a pink Chanel bag this is a white Chanel bag that's going to be about 20 minutes long if I'm going to talk about them and do this five minute intro it's going to be longer so bear with me and maybe come back and watch it later on I don't know so I'm literally just going to pick up the bags that are closer to me I think no, do you know what? Because I'm forgetful, I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. And it's not in order of what I bought. I'm literally just going to do it in order of how it's displayed. My cabinets here are from Ikea. And the reason why I have Ikea ones, well, I think they're great. I like them. But just some good advice for anyone storing their bags or, or doing their wardrobe. I moved in this house three years ago and I wanted to play with the space and Ikea wardrobes are the best for that. They're very, they're very affordable, they're the cheapest you can get basically. You can move them around, you can move these shelves around and it helped me decide the layout. I've changed this around so many times, even this bag and shoe wheel, I've played around with this the most so I recommend doing that. And I'm actually getting this changed in about two months time so definitely subscribe to my channel if you want to see a whole walking wardrobe tour. Okay, I'm actually very forgetful with prices and when I bought things, um, and I'll try and remember. I bought this, I think, at the beginning of last year. I had a grey reissue one of this in fabric about four years ago. And I bought it pre-loved, and about two days later, I changed my mind. I, re I realised that I didn't want a reissue, which I, that's, I don't normally do that. I'm normally pretty set on what I buy. Um, but I just didn't want it in fabric and I basically always wanted this one. They did do this one quite a few times and they're always going to do it but it would have a print on it, it would be fabric, it would be a loud colour. When I saw this it was the first time I saw a classic bag that was black, gold, it was everything that I wanted, it was really worth the wait. I would love the suitcase but it's just so expensive. This was around £6,000. Um, it was 5000 something, very expensive, but I knew that I'd wanted it for so, so many years. It's great for travelling. I did an unboxing with this and so many people said, oh, it's too heavy, blah, blah, blah. It's not too heavy. Like, I don't use this to go shopping. I use it mainly for travelling, especially when I'm on the Eurostar and it doesn't get, because I don't really like taking really expensive bags on the aeroplane on long haul flights. I feel like they get they get ruined. I'm very careful if I do. This is great. I go to Paris a lot and this is great for the Eurostar. This is great if I want to get out the house and work on my laptop. I put my laptop in here, my charger. It's not like my gym bag or anything, but for my work, my everyday lifestyle, I loved this. And I find it very useful and you can use that um, I've got that zipped up at the moment, but you can put that on your suitcase and it's amazing. I use this a lot. Um, I always see these pre loved Not always, but I keep an eye on it and I always link them on my stories. I actually linked one the other day that was brand new, half the price of what I paid. And there was one in nude and it was brand new and half the price I paid and I put it on my stories. So make sure you follow me on there. It is, it is heavy-ish, but for what it is and leather, it's not that bad. Um, so that's my, that's called an X. XL Classic Flap. Next I have this. I'm not going to explain where I got every every bag from, if it's from Pre-Loved. Um, I'll just put that in the description box of where I got it from. So this one I got from... Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to do that because it's going to just lengthen the video. This is Pre-Loved. I bought this for New York Fashion Week about five years ago. It's from the 90s. I ended up getting one in really good condition. I haven't worn this for a while, actually. Um, but I love how it's a rucksack that's really practical. Because a lot of the new... like I have the Gabrielle rucksack, which I'm going to show you. And it only does up like that. Whereas this actually has the flap. And I just always loved this bag. I picked it up for a really good price. The condition is really good. And I love how heavy the chain is. I hate to say it, but the 90s Chanel and then anything before anything before like 2003 ish were made so well they're still made really well and it's of course a luxury brand but they're not made like this like the the weight in the gold and look at this there's no tarnishing whatsoever and it's well over 20 years old, whereas the new ones tend to tarnish a bit. So I do recommend buying vintage Chanel. I just think the quality is amazing, the leather's amazing. 
and I think this is just really cute. I took this to Coachella, New York Fashion Week. I still love this bag and I'm always going to keep it. And this is a really good bag if you are, you know, you want a Chanel bag, but you want to start at vintage. I really recommend that. I really haven't thought about how I'm going to film this. I'm literally just showing you just, you know, as I would if a friend was around. And don't make me choose a favorite bag because it's impossible. But if you want me to choose one, this is definitely one of them. This was my second Hermes bag that I ever bought. Um, I love it so much. I was waiting for so long for the perfect grey. I actually bought these two, uh, two at Kelly bags. I might show you at the same time, actually. I got these in the same week, which was very absurd. It's not the kind of thing I always do. But the two bags that I wanted came at the same time. These were my two dream bags. I actually prefer the 28, but I'm very pleased I've got a 32. I have unboxing videos for both of these. They're actually really old. I've had them for a couple of years now. Old as in, I've come a long way since them YouTube days. So I'm definitely trying to update all my videos like that. So 28 is probably my favorite if it just takes the lead when it comes to 38 and 22. But I have done in-depth videos comparing the two and Birkin and Kelly, it's all on my channel. But I do love the 32 and I would love to get a 25. So this is Epsom, Palladium hardware, has the long chain. I'm five foot six by the way, so when I'm showing you the cutaways of me wearing each bag, hopefully that helps you with the proportions of you maybe picking a Chanel or Valentino, you know, hopefully that helps you as well. So this is for sure one of my favorite bags. It's just so durable, durable, practical, wearable. I love it so much. It's one of, yeah, one of my favorite bags and it's just so good for when I go for dinner, when I go shopping, I love everything about it. And these are definitely two of my favorite bags. If I had to condense my collection, this would definitely be in the top five. I love it how this is really good for every day. I love it how this one's a bit smaller. And what's this space? Hopefully I get a 25 Kelly soon. So yep, yeah, they are my two of my Hermes bags. And head over to my Hermes collection video if you wanna see more in depth about that. But I have quite the collection and they're all very, they offer something different. But you'll see like a similarity in tones and brands. I still kind of go for the same thing. This is my Dior Ever. It's kind of like a, a charcoal grey with a hint of blue, which I really love. I love wearing the colour blue. I think blue on blondes is really nice. Bl uh, blue with blue eyes is really nice. I bought this when I was trying to get a 32 Kelly, wherever that Kelly is. And, you know, a Birkin. Actually both. And I love it how that looks a bit like a Birkin. And this looks, you know, a little bit like a Kelly. And I wasn't trying to, you know, get a dupe or anything, but I love that style of bag. I love bags with handles like this that you can put your arm through. And I also love with a crossbody. The Kelly 32 looks great with a crossbody. I never use this. This is too bulky and boxy. It's like putting a strap on a Birkin. It just doesn't work, but I keep it just in case, especially if I'm going traveling. I love the structure of this bag. I love the leather. I think Dior Ever bags are really practical. I love the weight of it because it makes it feel really luxe and nice to carry, but it's not too heavy. I've got this little Dior Twilly as well. I do put Dior tw um, Hermes Twillies on all my Hermes bags. I prefer it without it because it makes it a bit more feminine. I'm not really, I'm more masculine-ish when it comes to my style. But I do make sure I put them on every now and again because just the oil, natural oil from your hands can stain it if I have fake tan on. So I do recommend the Twillies on, on any of your expensive bags. But this one I just wear as a little bow. And I'm pretty sure this is the one that has C on it. Yeah, it does. This is the initial one. I actually need to wear this a little bit more often. But yeah, this is great when I have meetings and I need to put everything in. Oh, I've got my Hermes Twillies. These are the ones that go on my Birkin, which is there. I'm going to put them on after this video, actually, because I've got in the habit of just picking up that Birkin. So definitely one of my favourite Dior bags. I love Dior as a brand. Chanel and Hermes keep their price the most when it comes to resale. Dior is definitely in there, but Dior doesn't keep its resale value as much as Chanel. Um, and it makes sense because Dior is a little bit more affordable than Chanel, definitely more affordable than Hermes. So it's definitely up there with the super brand. 
And if you are choosing between a Dior and Chanel, if you are someone that really likes to sell on their pieces, just know that your Chanel is probably going to sell more. If it's a seasonal bag against a classic Dior, yeah, that's different. But if they're both classics, the Chanel would sell for slightly more. It will hold its value a little bit more than what a Dior would. So I hope that's good to bear in mind. Definitely a fab, ba fab bag, definitely like a good work bag. But I don't work in an office and I still wear this on the weekends. I absolutely love it. One of my very first Chanel bags was this. Oh, I forgot to talk about that. I'll talk about it in a second. This was one of my... I think this was my third Chanel bag. I bought a um, cream and black. Whenever I buy something for the first time, I'm pretty much, there's no brand that I haven't got that I want, so I'm kind of over that. But I always buy black first, or something neutral, beige, some kind of beige tone or a black. And then I want to introduce the colour. Red is a really fantastic colour because it, it's still a primary colour and goes with everything. Or you know if your favourite colour is baby blue or orange then obviously go for that with your favourite colour but I always start off with a light and dark neutral then I start going into colours. I was still being a bit careful and I still bought a neutral which is gold and this was my first ever reissue and my only re reissue. That's not because I don't like them, I love them and this is a bag that I don't think I could ever sell because they're so expensive the reissues they're more expensive than a classic flap and I know that when I get older this is a bag I just know I'm going to love it and always regret selling it but I love the chain this chain is inspired by Gabrielle's um childhood in an orphanage and they used to wear the chains like this I've seen some youtubers say that about this chain and it's not true it's this chain and they used to put heavy keys on it I won't get into the detail of all the compartments because I know that a lot of people have spoken about that and it's the love notes and everything but I love the reissue I do think it's very chic it has great compartments I'm not going to do what's in my bag I did that on the other one and people actually thought I've been sponsored by taking out what was already in there but it was genuine they were genuine things so I'm not going to go into what's in there like lipsticks and stuff I don't want this to come across sponsored because it isn't so that's my only reissue um, I think it's just really chic, this gold goes with everything, particularly knitwear, and I don't like brash gold, I like this muted brush gold, I really like it. And I don't wear it that often, but I definitely should, and I know when I get older I will. I'll quickly talk about this. This was one of the first design handbags that I ever had, it's the dual saddle bag, it was like, it was so strange to see it come back, and you know, it's come back by storm, everybody loves it, I love it. I had this bag in, in Celine, Gucci, Burberry, Louis Vuitton and Dior and I was around 17 to 19 that I got all these bags so you can see that even from that age when I was literally at school and a waitress I would save up for bags like this. I'm sure it was around £700, maybe like 550 I actually put my HRH chain on this and I hook it on to that and I'll show you in a cutaway and I wear it around my waist because you can actually wear this around your waist if anyone's got this from back in the day you have to wear it it's actually better than the new mini because the new mini doesn't fit a phone in whereas this is an iPhone plus and it fits with more than enough room and I wish that you all made the mini like this because it's so much better oh I forgot my asthma's bad today so I know girls that can fit that all around their waist if you can't, like me, just get an HRH chain and you can click it on like this and you can get it in silver and luckily they click on any chain so you can actually just get that extra few inches which is I need and put that around your waist, like even with this denim outfit I wore it to a Dior event with a back dress so definitely recommend getting these and they're really good if you've got a bag that doesn't have a top handle and you can put them on your Chanel's and it has a top handle. Uh, these are always for sale pre-love, not always, but you'll find the odd one. I'm sure I'll be able to link one below for you and the price is really great, it's around 500. So if you want to dip into the saddle bag trend and you don't want to pay the free, it's like 3,000 pound basically. And the small one, it, it's not really worth it because you can't even fit a phone. You can literally fit a credit card and a lipstick and that's it. So I definitely recommend that, especially because it's such a heavy trend, you might not want to spend too much money. That's that one. I hope I'm not whizzing too much, but I'm just aware that I don't want to take too long doing this. 
know me, I'm probably talking way too much anyway. This is honestly one of my favourite, favourite bags and I have two favourite Chanel bags and this is one of them. When I saw this, and if you're a follower of mine, you will know that I got a black one of these last year. I'm not going to go into it because it's this negative energy that I don't want to bring into my space. I'm over it. You know, when bad things happen, sometimes it's just better to let it go. And I've done that with that bag, but I basically need to replace it. I'm not going to get into what happened, but I, I do need to replace it. And this bag, the Trendy, is now a classic. They skip it every couple of seasons, but it's back this season, launched on the 18th of March. I've got my name down for one. By the time this video goes out, I probably, hopefully, have a new one. I bought this, I'm not sure, around three years ago. And I saw it in um, the Sloan Avenue boutique, and I, I fell in love with it immediately. And I was so scared of it because it was beige, it was lambskin. It was at a time when I was terrified of lambskin because of all the rumours and I can officially confirm that lambskin is nowhere near as bad as what everyone says. Touched on this before with my channel. French women around 40 years and above only appreciate and buy, not everyone, but if you are a firm Chanel collector, you love Chanel, you've been wearing it for years, the, this kind of woman in France, especially Paris, south of France, you are going to only wear lamb. And I have had, like, especially Parisians that are so outspoken, which I personally love. They have said to me, this is not, this is not a proper Chanel bag. This is caviar. Like, you should not buy caviar. I don't feel bad. I like the caviar. My first bag was caviar. My favourite other Chanel bag, which is there, the great, the dove grey one. That's caviar. Don't listen to it. Buy whatever you like. It is very durable. But just as some Chanel information, the lamb is more prestigious and up until about, like I remember when I bought mine, I would say about seven years ago, I really should check these facts before I do these videos, around seven years ago, you could buy a caviar Chanel bag and it would be around £800 cheaper than a lambskin. And then they kind of worked out that everybody was buying the caviar for that reason and they balanced it out. So it's really not prestigious anymore as you're growing up in this generation. So I didn't buy this bag, going back to this bag. This is called the Chanel Top Handle or Trendy. In France they seem to call it the Top Handle, in England they, they call it the Trendy. So I love everything about it. It reminds me of, I, I clearly like the way that the Kelly is. I love the Top Handle, I love that you can have it as a crossbody and I'm five foot six and this is the most perfect length for me for a crossbody. I didn't buy it, it was very expensive at the time, it was just under three and a half thousand, which was a lot at the time. That was basically the exact same price of a classic flap at the time. It's gone up since, it's more or less 4,000 at the moment. And I didn't buy it. I then went back, because I just couldn't stop looking at it. It was the only one in the whole of England. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna be very careful with it. I have to have it, I'm going to buy it. I am careful with my bags, but I'm not. Sometimes I watch YouTube and I'm like, wow, that is pristine. Mine aren't like that. I have had this about three years. I wore it in the rain the other day, like not on purpose, it just started raining. It is immaculate, there's nothing on with it. I wear it with denim, leather, there's no colour transfer. Obviously I am a bit careful. Um, I was really careful with this pink Valentino and it accidentally something transferred, you know, it's sometimes it's out of your control. But it's immaculate. I love the three compartments. I really haven't emptied anything. There's three compartments, it's so practical the color is amazing someone asked me on my instagram the other day about the color this was the first ever trendy that ever came out it wasn't even a black it was just this color it is a, like a minky beigey color with an undertone of gray it is the perfect beige color and they've never done this color since i've linked a few on a pre-love site before and they sell instantly so keep an eye on my stories i'm always linking any bag that i have um, just in case you, you want to try and find one. Um, what was I going to say about this bag? Then it sold so well, they brought it back. Whenever something sells really well, they bring it back. Um, and then if it sells really well, they bring it in as a classic, like they did with the boy bag, and like they did with the trendy. This is now a classic. So I'll keep an eye on this, this colour for you. At the moment, they're doing the chevron, which I like. I would have a chevron. I actually really like the grey in a chevron, but I do like the quilted. 
and at the moment they have the plain colour which I actually quite like as well. So as you can tell, because I'm not stopped talking about this, it is one of my favourite bags. If you are thinking of buying a Chanel and you love this one, it is a great classic. For me it's the most practical, I think it's like the modern classic Chanel bag and it's such a great design. I love everything about it, I want to talk about it all day, I absolutely love it. And hopefully I'll get the black one of that. So I quite like the big version of it as well. Now we can talk about my other favourite bag. Oh. This was a bag that I wanted for a long time. Grey has always been one of my favourite colours. I hate it that grey has been a trend for like the last couple of years. I'm kind of waiting for that trend to die. This is my grey, dove grey Chanel classic flap. This is a bag that I was waiting for for so long. I still love the classic flap. Um, I always put my phone in here. Sometimes this is really good for putting receipts or something that I don't want to get lost. This is a nice size at the back. Never put your phone in here because someone would steal it because that's what happened to me. I love these bags. You can't go wrong with a classic Chanel bag. They are so timeless. This is not called a reissue. This is not called a 2.55. That is a 2.55 reissue. This is a classic flap. Um, it's silver hardware. I love grey and gold. I love them with both. This I actually hunted down in in I think it was Minneapolis and they transferred it to Miami and actually one of my followers at the time helped me actually get this and then I've seen it come back once because my friend was desperate for it and I said I'd help her get it if I ever found one they brought it back around two years ago and I actually got that one for just as a favour as a friend as friends do and I've only seen it once here a lot of people say oh look your Chanel bag and then it's never the same it's either a different colour grey it's it's not even the same leather the lambskin is more common than the caviar with this um, and it's a really rare bag and no I'm not selling it it's one of my favourites these two are my favourite bags I just love it it goes with everything that I wear I love holding it like this I love holding it like this, like this. I love the different ways that you can hold it. They are very practical, easy to wear. And if you could only invest in one bag, for me, it would be a classic flap. This trendy, yeah, is pretty high on the list. And yeah, I think between these two. Obviously, if you want to start off cheaper, like I did, like I started at entry point and just made my way up the designer ladder. I even said I would never spend that money on an Hermes bag, but obviously things change. I started earning more money um, and things change, but definitely start off pre-loved, vintage, and just work your way up. Really think about, do you want to, I can't help with the whole advice thing, can I? Start thinking, you know, I don't know how much everyone spends, but if you spend 50 pound a week or 50 pound a month in a high street store, maybe stop that and start because this is what I did. All of my friends, I had friends that would spend 300 pound a month in in on um, high street stores, and I would never do it. I'd buy the odd thing, and I would save all of my money. When I bought my first classic flap, I it took me about a year to save up for it, and I got 10 percent off at the time, so I worked at Harrods. Oh, I missed that discount. And I went to buy it and it went up that morning and I'd got paid that day so I couldn't do it any sooner. I had like about a hundred pounds to last me until the end of the month and I was paying rent, living on my own. And I was like, okay, fine, I won't buy it then. And I saved for another month and I went back and got it. So bags, these Chanel bags always go up and what I paid for all of these Chanel bags, if I sold it now, I would get more than what I paid for it. I love a grey bag, just goes with everything else that I wear. This is my mini baby Dior, I love this bag, I wore it to the BAFTAs and I don't really go to these fancy places but I'm glad that when I went to the BAFTAs I had a bag that was cute and evening enough to go but also like I have one other evening bag which is that one. Um, but this one I needed to bring my vlog vlogging camera so I was never more grateful for my baby Dior more than that night. I love this colour, it has a bit of a shim shimmer to it. It's so cute. I've, I've got actually very petite wrists, so these fit me fine. I don't think it fits everyone, I don't know, but I have been told that by followers that they can't get their wrist in like that, and also with the 25, they can't put their arm through. 
I love the chain. I find this a little bit frustrating sometimes that it doesn't fit everything I need. But with that said, I actually wear this more than my other Dior, where is that? I think it's up there. Uh, I actually wear this one more and I love the chain and it's such a good classic bag. I definitely recommend these ones because it's still good for when you go shopping. I always love a crossbody bag for when you go shopping um, because then you don't have to have anything heavy and you fit your bare minimum in a minute because there's nothing worse than carrying around a heavy bag. Definitely recommend getting this. This is a bag I'd never sell. I'm really glad I got that in a grey colour. My next bag is my Birkin 25 Etan Togo Hermes. I have basically like this, when I talk to my friends about Hermes, especially when I'm talking to my essay at Hermes, if anybody that doesn't shop Hermes or know about Hermes, you would literally think we're speaking another language and my predictive text on my phone actually changes words to, like if I say to go, it puts it in one word as Togo leather. It's crazy, it makes me laugh every time. So this was my third Hermes bag and this is quite hard to get hold of, the Birkin 25, especially in a grey tone or any neutral tone is really hard to get hold of in Hermes and I'm not going to go into that, I'll talk more in my Hermes collection video which will already be live and there's also an unboxing where I go into like detail, um, I think that video is about 40 minutes long, so anything that you want to know more of, leave me a comment in the description box, uh, the comment box or go and watch the other ones because you might find that helpful. Yep, so this is Etan. As soon as I saw it, I've been waiting for a long, long time. I obviously, like I just said, I'm not going to get into how I go around sourcing my Hermes, but they are, apart from my Kelly, one of the Kellys, they're all from the Hermes store directly, and I don't put an order in, but go check out the other video. But this is one of the bags that I waited for quite a while because I, I was adamant I wanted this size, this leather, this colour, and I love this baby Birkin. I thought I'd only ever get one but I already want another one because they're just, they're actually great for like weddings because when I go to a wedding I don't want to carry a bag like that. It's not realistic for me. I love photography. I love even taking pictures and videos on my phone so I always need my charger and I actually want something like this and I think it's perfect for dinner. I love the 30 and I would love to have a 30 but you obviously can't take that on a dinner day or a wedding, well you can but you know, this is perfect for everything and I use the inserts for all of my bags so it keeps the structure and you don't want any leakages or anything like that. But yep, the 25, one of my most used bags, I actually try to not pick it up as much as I do because I don't, they're so expensive, I don't want to be wearing it every single day but if I need a grey bag and this just goes with everything. I just want to pick it up every day. So I actually try not to stop myself from, from using it. But if you want to know what I prefer, Kelly or Birkin, there's also a video for that. But, yeah, my Hermes 25. Let's pop those back. Oh my goodness, we're not even halfway through. It's going to be such a long video. Another Dior bag that I have is the Dior Orama. This is a black one, as you can see, silver hardware. This is a lot lighter to use than, oh, excuse me, than a Chanel bag. They feel a lot lighter. They're always allergy tablets in all of my bags. The chain is really, really light, and it feels a bit strange at first when you're used to carrying a Chanel bag, but actually to carry around it's really comfortable because it is very light. I like the leather bit here, makes it really comfortable to use. The leather is really durable. I actually don't pick this bag up as much as I, I should, but I really, really love it. I love that it's a classic black colour that goes with everything. Um, and if you are deciding between this and a classic flat, they very much do the same kind of thing. This doesn't have as many pockets, but the pocket here fits my iPhone perfectly. Has a zip, and it's more than practical enough. It's lined with fabric, not leather, like a Chanel bag is and it is therefore cheaper than a Chanel bag. Dior is, tends to be cheaper than Chanel anyway, as, ex, as I've explained before. I love Chanel ready-to-wear, and whenever I go to buy something from Dior ready-to-wear, I'm always shocked how cheap it is compared to Chanel. It's quite a big difference in price, but things like this, you can see the difference. There's fabric inside, the chain is lighter. You can kind of justify why it is, but again, a great bag. 
great bags, like great first designer bags, it kind of does everything. That's my Diorama. I used to love Wallet on a Chains, and I'm going to talk about all of them at once to save some time. Where is the back one? Where is the back one? Here. So I have three, and I have no intention in selling these, and I've, you've probably heard me say it before if you've followed my channel. That's such a me kind of colour way. First one I got was black, and I remember back in the day when the black version of this was cheaper. And I remember this being seven, I remember this being 550 and the leather version being, the quoted version, sorry, being um, in lambskin, being 550, 650, 750, it went up 100 pound each season. And now they're very expensive. Now they're, I couldn't even tell you, but the last time I looked, they were about 1400 pound, which I think they need to bring that down a little bit because I don't know, I think they've really gone too expensive on these, but that's just my opinion. I remember they were so affordable, and I remember there was a baby blue one of this, and it was such a good everyday bag, and I remember I didn't buy it, because I was like, that's just too expensive. I'd rather get a like a classic fab. I know that's a lot more, but... Anyway, the reason why I love these, they're great for travelling, you can just pack them in your carry-on, always put expensive bags in my carry-on, never take the risk. But you can pack them, they're very easy, they're great for shopping, they're just crossbody. You can fit your iPhone in there. When I talk for long, my braces to start making a noise and hurt. So iPhone Plus, fit it perfect. You can actually put all your credit cards. You can use it as a purse if you like. Obviously in England we call purses in where you put your credit cards and money. You can actually just put your cards in there and it actually saves you using a purse. I have, I'll talk to you for a couple of my purses. Do you know what? I'm not going to because this video is going to be so long. I'm going to fill an SLG, Small Leather Good videos, in a separate because I've got a lot to say when it comes to my purses and I have a lot of purses, as in money wallet purses. So yeah, I love these. A little trick that I know a lot of you do do is you can wrap the chain around like this. Because a lot of people say to me, wow, you must be so tall. My Chanel crossbody uh, wallet on a chain comes like down to my knees and, you know, it's on your waist. You must be so tall. And I'm like, no, 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 it's just a trick. I just wrap it around and then it becomes the perfect length on my waist, which is perfect. So that's all it is. It is a bit annoying when you want to undo it because when you're sanding up, the chain will come off. But it's not, not too much of a, a worry. Um, and you can also put these, the chain, fully inside and use it as a little clutch for an evening. Um, yeah, really good for shopping. I used to always carry these for shopping because I would just put everything in there and it was everything I needed. I had my hands, it was safe, I had everything here. Loved them, can't recommend them enough for just the everyday woman and the mum. They were excellent. The only reason I don't wear them as much is because I tend to always have my vlogging camera and it doesn't fit it. But I'm still wearing them a lot. It is a little bit of a trend to have a small bag like this and then your big bag. I'll actually put up a picture here that I put on my Instagram and Paris, my husband, obviously thought that I was winding him up and said it's a bit of a trend and it's not. I just didn't want to leave my trendy in the car. Uh, but I think it is becoming a bit of a trend to carry two bags. So you heard it here maybe first or maybe you've read that somewhere else. I don't know, but I think it's going to be a bit of a trend. The reason why I wear this the most is when I'm travelling. I'm a very stressful flyer, and even if you're not stressful, this is good for organisation. Obviously, it doesn't have to be Chanel, but I put my passport in here, my bank card, um, like a lip balm, and my boarding pass. So that when I get to the gate, when I'm getting on the plane, when I'm buying something, I have my boarding pass. My best friend once, when we were travelling, lost her boarding pass. It was awful. She nearly missed the flight. She was crying. It was horrible. And it's nearly happened to me a few times, so I keep that on me at all times. And then I normally have my Chanel Deville, or the big XL jumbo bag. And there's nothing worse than putting it on the floor, looking for everything. Like, you've all been there, we've all been there. So get yourself a little wallet on a chain, whatever brand you want, of course. And it's really good for that. This is my rose gold one. I actually really wanted this in the classic flap, and I'm so glad I... I listened to myself and it was just for experience of buying bags. This came in the classic flap and I really, really wanted it. It was very expensive. 
I could get it if I really wanted to, but there was something inside me that was like, Claire, it's rose gold, you're actually, you might be really into rose gold now, you probably won't be in five, ten years time, just get a wallet on a chain, get it out of your system, like if you want a black classic flap, a beige classic flap, or a grey classic flap, whatever, and you love orange and you want to get an orange one, maybe go with the seasonal bag, because they're cheaper, like this is a seasonal bag and they're always cheaper, but I'll get to that, I'll actually go to my Chanel video, because it'll be in that. Um, and this is, I got it out of my system and I'm so glad because I've got my little rose gold Chanel. I don't use it that much but it's there if I want it and I didn't pay, you know, I saved over half the money buying this. It's great for travelling, uh, great for weddings, just a really great grow-to bag. And I love it that I have the quilted version, the big CC caviar. I actually like this one the best, it reminds me of like the 90s ones. And then I have this one that also looks a bit vintage, but it wasn't. I bought these two brand new, bought that one pre-loved. But yeah, they're just great, and I can't bear to get rid of them. And especially, hopefully, one day when I have kids, I can give them to like, my kids. That'd be really, really nice. What, what was that? Okay, so put that one back. Put that one back. My... What the hell is this bag called? I always forget. Pochette Matisse, Matisse Pochette, something like that. I don't use this bag that much, and it's because I'm not really a Louis Vuitton person. There's only so many brands I can invest in. And when I saw this bag, I do like Louis Vuitton, don't get me wrong. I love the suitcases, I love the vanity cases. My mother in law has the most beautiful Louis Vuitton jewelry box, I love it. I'm just very invested in Chanel Dior and Hermes, but I do like Louis Vuitton. I love that they're doing the painted bags at the moment and when I saw this I had to have it again when you love buying Chanel and Hermes you go to another brand and you're always shocked how cheap everything is so this was 1400 I bought this from Harrods I think no Paris I bought this in Paris and it's very practical again top handle crossbody black and gold and I bought this for I'm determined not to talk about what's inside my bags I bought this because, and I still stand by that, but when I want an everyday bag, sometimes if I do get public transport or I'm doing something where I know I'm going to be running around everywhere, bags do get ruined. Like if I went out today and I have had to run errands and it's pouring, I'll wear this bag because it's not as expensive as the Hermes and the, the Chanel. They're so durable. It's like a canvas leather, very, very hard durable leather, which of course is a cheaper kind of leather, but they're very durable. I don't panic as much about it. Of course, I still take great care in it and I love it. And you know, it was worth every penny and it was a big deal for me to buy. And um, I don't want to come across like, oh yeah, this is my cheap bag. That's not what I mean, but I have more expensive bags and I don't want to use them all the time. And this is kind of another bag where I feel like I've got a lovely bag on my arm, but it's a bit more, you know, like it's canvas inside. They're not as delicate, so I have them for different reasons. And it's a very durable bag. I love the pocket at the back. You can see the trend with the kind of bags that I love, and I love it tucking the strap in. You can take it off. I loved all the different colours. And I've gone to sell this quite a few times, and I can't bring myself to sell it because I know that I regret it. I love having one Louis Vuitton bag. And like I say, if I need a bag where I want a nice bag for the day and it's pouring down a rain, I'm not going to leave myself with a bag and it's a classic bag, loads of everything and it'll be really good for travelling as well because if I'm travelling with a Chanel bag which I don't want to pack in a suitcase, I'll pop that in my carry-on and it's a bit more, it can take a bit more of a thrown around than any other bag and it will come out and be completely safe and it would be one that I would take on holiday with me but I'm making up that I don't love this bag and I do, so that's my only Louis Vuitton bag, and I do like Louis Vuitton, it's just that I always prioritise and fall in love with other kind of bags. My first ever Chanel bag. I'm going to bring a couple over here. This was the bag that I was telling you about that I went to go and buy and it was, it went up and I, it was only like 2400 and I think I had saved up 2,120 and it went to like 2,490 something like that and it's amazing because back then I physically didn't have that I never ever shop on a credit card the only reason why I just got a credit card not too recently was literally for credit scoring that I 
And I also used to be terrified that I'd go and buy stuff, but I am actually a grown adult now that has responsibilities and I don't ever get tempted. But I just wanted to say, please don't ever get yourself in debt when it comes to things like this. Look at my huge collection. But just let me tell you that I'm in my 30s. I do work in fashion, so I get gifts and things like that. But pretty much for all the Chanel and Hermes, I don't get gifted. But this is someone that has been buying a designer bag since my first Diorama when I was 18. And I've been so dedicated. Never, I always made sacrifices like going on, like not boohoo sacrifices, but I just would always rather buy a bag than you know, two holidays to Ibiza with the girls. And this is over a long time. So don't watch my video and feel under pressure. I am mid thirties. I do do this as a job. So I get, you know, like I just said, and I never buy anything on a credit card. Never, no store credit, no credit card. If you don't have your money to buy it, please don't buy it. It's not worth getting yourself in debt. And I really wanna share that with you. I have a couple of friends that felt under pressure and got in debt and, it's really not a route to go down and I always never did that. So stay strong and don't do that. It took me nearly a year to save up for this. I thought there'd be a day when I'd never have a Chanel bag and look at me now. So that was my first one. Um, I was actually told by someone in Chanel one day that this was a fake because... And obviously I'm very confident where I bought this from. I bought it from Harrods with my staff discount, 10%. And he said that it was fake because I was with a client, shopping with a client of mine. And yeah, he said it was fake it wasn't maroon burgundy inside. And I made a complaint to Chanel. They took it very seriously. He was on, he was just, I'm getting into all this story now. He had, he was on his probation. Didn't know n enough about the brand whatsoever. Should not have said that to me, even if it was fake. Um, I took my bag in, they confirmed everything. And I said, well, if this bag is fake, you need to talk to your Chanel team in Harrods because that's where I bought it. And they, it was actually from, I'll try and find the exact date in the description box below, but I think it was from 2007, maybe 2003, I really cannot remember, that they, this always used to be black, and the year after I bought this, they then made it burgundy, like all the other bags, and it literally was from feedback that when you're looking in, you can see things inside when it's burgundy, which you can, when it's black, it's hard to sometimes find things, and yeah, that was why they changed that. Um, but yeah, it's not fake, so don't worry if you ever want to buy something pre-loved and you're wondering why it's black inside, just look at the um, the date of when it was bought or released and that will help you work out. Don't, don't be worried that it's fake because a lot of them, including mine, they did used to be black and I actually love having a black one. It makes it really different and I love it. Um, yes, that's my first one. I would never sell that. I love it anyway. Every girl should have a plastic flap, no pressure or anything, but... That was my first bag, I'd never get rid of it. This is my Gabrielle backpack. I've got this in white and black, as you can see. This is actually very, very durable. I took this to Vietnam with me. Crazy, I don't even know why I did that. And I think I was just in a mind where I was like, I'm spending this money, enjoy it, use it. It's only material thing. What's the worst that can happen? Enjoy it. And I am starting to do that with my bags, just to enjoy it. Because I, you know, I spend a lot of money saving, working really hard. I know I'll get judged a lot because I'm materialistic and everything for buying this bag, but it's my passion. I use them, at least it's not artwork where I'm not actually using them, but you know, if you love artwork, that's fine for you also. Um, I don't get myself in debt and it's just something I enjoy and it's just something a part of my career. But yeah, used this in Vietnam and it did get a bit dirty, but considering I was literally on the back of a scooter flying around Vietnam, it actually didn't get that dirty at all. It's actually really durable. This is like a coated caviar. Um, I think I got this for Coachella, I'm not sure. But I like a rucksack, I think they're really cute to wear. I love the mixed hardware, this side's silver, this side's gold. I love wearing it like this. I love them, I think they're really cute and a bit tomboy-y. My Valentino rucksack, rucksack bag. I actually got this with one of the vouchers that I was given from a brand. And although I buy, I buy stuff with vouchers that I love, of course I do, but you know when you get something for your birthday and you get a voucher, Sometimes, you know, it's not really quite your hard-earned money in a sense. You don't want to waste it, but you tend to buy stuff that, hmm, maybe you want part your money with, but you still want it. That's what happened with this. So I loved it. I wasn't sure if I was going to buy it out of my own money from my bank, so the voucher was perfect. Let me tell you that these are one of my favourite bags. I don't really love studs, 
but again you can see the, the pattern the long handle you can have it long as well the top handle I just love carrying it like this it feels very nice and I always have said that you don't really know if you love a bag until you've worn it because I remember when I had the Celine, Celine trapeze this is a great example I loved it after two days of wearing it and using it, I hated it. The way that it opened, it was impractical. It was all over the place, so uncomfortable. And you try and error with bags. I'm so experienced with all the bags that I have that I'm pretty, I know what I'm getting myself into now. With the Birkin, that was a bit of a risk for me. And after having that for a year, I absolutely love it. And that was a risk, but um, I'm glad that I went with that risk. So if you're thinking about buying one of these bags, they're so practical, they're so great to use, they're so versatile. I love this bag, really recommend it. Love it way more than I thought, and if you like taking pictures, it's very photogenic. Guys, we're not even halfway through, this is ridiculous. I did warn you it was going to be a long video. Maybe you can come back and watch it in three stages or something. Okay, we nearly finished this side. This is my YSL college bag. I have had this ages and again, a great bag. A lot of my friends have this bag. I love how light this is. It feels very comfortable. Cro uh, long handle and a top handle. Love anything with um, a pocket at the back. It's just really practical. I hope I haven't been too far away this whole time charcoal grey it's very durable because I use this all the time not so much recently and it's very durable it's great for work great for every day I just think these bags are really practical durable I love the chevron I'm not the biggest fan with chevron and chanel like I said but for any other brands because I associate chanel with the quilted but for any other brand I really like it so yeah that's a great everyday bag if you're looking to invest in a designer bag that's not as expensive as the Chanel. I love Saint Laurent bags. I've actually got one on order and it's on pre-order and I get it at the end of March. So that will be probably my second YSL bag, Saint Laurent bag. No, I had a Sac de Jour. If, you, um, if you're thinking about getting a Sac de Jour, I can't recommend them bags enough. The big, the small, they used to be full leather and they were extremely heavy and then they kind of fixed that and they become a lot lighter. I only sold mine because I bought my Birkin. And I actually had it in that colour. And it was too similar to that. But I definitely recommend the Sac de Jour. I think they're fantastic bags. And all round Saint Laurent are really good bags. I like how light they are. And they always seem to be really practical. Um, let's start with... Yes? Alright, give me five minutes. Oh, okay. I've got to go and have my lunch. I'll be back. 